All right, guys, I'm going to do a little update video on the garden, uh, show you what is doing really well, and uh, show you some things that have not done very well. <laughs> now, those of you that don't know, I just started this garden this year. This is the first year we did this garden. We had a back to Eden garden in the back. That didn't work out for us, so we decided to go more conventional, uh, just beds. Not so much raised beds, but beds. And... Uh, put a border around them with uh, concrete blocks and I'm in the soil and all that and um, if you're wondering how I did this I'm gonna put a link to those videos here on how I did the uh, raised beds or just beds but they're not really so much raised beds but okay so this was the first year again I amended the soil with manure compost I added the minerals I had my soil tested I'm gonna put a link to that video here also where you uh, where I tested my soil and uh, they told me what the soil needed and I had that all shipped to me as far as the minerals and put that in and amended it with the compost and the manure um, so let me show you what's doing really good here and then I'll show you some things that just did not do well at all all right, guys, this here is my cucuzza trellis. Now, cucuzza is a Italian squash or gourd, actually. Uh, very viney. These gourds are essentially about the size of my arm, okay? Uh, so what, they'll, what these do is essentially crawl up the, the trellis here and crawl up the top, and these squash or gourds will hang down or on the side here um, so they're, they're really neat, they're very easy to grow, and they're very delicious too. Now these gourds, uh, normally, as far as, uh, uh, they have to be a certain length to grow for you to eat them. If you get them too long, or leave them on the vine too long, they get uh, very woody, the outside, and the seeds, of course, inside start growing, and it gets very seedy inside. So roughly two and a half feet long, two to two and a half feet long, is the perfect length for these to eat. Now again, these things hang down here like this, and I'm gonna have some update videos on this later on in the summer. Uh, they love the heat and they love water, of course. So you have to keep them watered and uh, they enjoy the heat. Um, and I'm gonna put a link to a video that I did. I'm gonna put it right here or in the description uh, of a, an old video I did two or three years ago, I don't remember now, that I grew in my other garden. Um, and I show you how to uh, pollinate the, uh, the uh, flowers on here to assure yourself that you will get um, the squash growing. Uh, very cool, very easy to grow. Uh, I don't think there's any bug that ever touched this plant before. Um, so they're, they're very uh, pest resistant. Another cool thing about this plant is the leaves. They call the ends here the tenirumi. That means the very tender ends. Um, not so much the big leaves, but the smaller, medium to smaller leaves. You can cut those all off and uh, cook them up like spinach. And uh, they are absolutely wonderful and delicious. Um, I'm going to have some recipes once these things start growing. I'll show you some recipes with the leaves and with the squash itself. Um, and how to make it like a stew out of it. It's, it's fantastic. So my kagutsas are doing good. Uh, let me show you my other vegetables. All right, my other vegetables that are doing good are my tomatoes. I got four trellises here of tomatoes. Uh, these are San Marzano tomatoes. They're, the, they're kind of like the Roma, but they're more elongated. Perfect for canning, and they're just delicious to eat, either, you know, however you want to eat them. I have here some marigolds, I have here some sweeties, I think those are the small tomatoes. And here I got brandy wine, so these get pretty big on, on this uh, trellis here. Now these are cattle panels, okay. I did, I did a video of that, yeah I did, I did a video of that, I'm going to put that either up here or in the description below the video and how I did this, it's very simple. Um, cattle panels are 16 feet long by I think 50 inches. I used uh, 8 foot T-posts and I put them, drove them in the ground 2 feet so they're basically about 6 feet off the ground or so. 
um, and the cattle panel is roughly a foot off the ground. So see they're getting about a little over a foot off the ground now so pretty soon I'm going to start training them to go up against the uh, or tying them up up against the, uh, the trellis here. Um, so that's, that's, that's going to work out really good. On this far end here, on this end I have my cucumbers and they're right next to my cucuzas. They're very similar as far as the way they grow, very viney. Um, and I put the same deal as a tomato trellis. So they'd be work good for your cucumbers. And I don't remember what variety of cucumbers, but they're slicing cucumbers. So they, they should be great to uh, eat in salads and things like that. Um, again, same deal on the uh, trellis. I got one, two, three, four, five, six trellises set up uh, for either cucumbers or tomatoes. And if you notice on the uh, Kogutsa trellis, I put a top on that. Um, I don't remember if I did a video on that, but uh, that's very simple to do. Um, let, me, let me bring you in a little closer. So you can see what I did here is I just used one inch electrical conduit, okay? Cut it to what I needed it, wired it all up, and I put couplings, um, the, the one inch conduit coupling, um, to join the two together because I think they were yeah 10 footers and then I had to add the extra piece because these are 16 foot uh, cattle panels but yeah and then put the cattle panel on here wired everything up and uh, it's gonna work out real good all right now as far as training your tomatoes onto the trellis what I'm going to be using are these here these little plastic uh, clips. Uh, you put your the stem in here and you just click it together. Okay, and it stays closed like that. And then when you want to open it up, you just open it like that. Okay, I'm going to put a link to these in the description uh, to the Amazon link to where I got these on Amazon. All right. All right, guys, here I have my onions and my garlic. The um, garlic I planted in December, uh, so here in East Texas, and that was a little late. I should have done it October, November, actually. Uh, they would have probably been ready by now. Uh, but these won't be ready until July-ish, maybe. Uh, so a couple more months for those. Uh, onions are doing okay. Uh, We've had so much rain lately, and I don't know if that's affecting them and why the, some of the ends are dying off. Um, but uh, we've had so much rain here uh, last week that uh, even my, my trees are suffering here uh, because uh, some of the trees I had planted uh, just recently, the ground had liquefied. It turned to like jello. I, I'm, I'm not kidding you. It was, it, we had so much rain. So I don't know if all this rain, some, some of the vegetables love all that rain. My, my kogutsa squashes, the cucumbers, zucchinis, they love that water. Pea trees, uh, not so much. <laughs> um, but these are doing okay. And let me show you my other vegetables, how they're doing. These are my zucchinis. Now I have this bed here and I have uh, another bed of zucchinis also. Um, that we planted a little later. These are doing great. Um, in fact, I have uh, quite a few zucchinis right now. In fact, I see one right here. Uh, they're very healthy, very good, and uh, I can't wait to taste them. All right, guys, this is my Swiss chard bed here and here. This is kind of a rainbow mix, I think they call it, and this is more of your white ribbed uh, Swiss chard. I love, love, love Swiss chard. Just boiled um, and use the same water you boiled it in and make like a soup out of it. And it only cooks like 10, 12 minutes if that. Use the same broth, pour a little olive oil, a little salt and pepper, and it's very simple and it, it's absolutely delicious. Um, so these are doing good and the bugs are not bothering it. It's, it's the most perfect 
leafy green to grow. I, I'm, I'm not kidding you. They, they're very tolerant to the cold and the heat. As long as you keep them watered, they're very uh, tolerant to the heat and cold. Um, so yeah, these are doing good and they are delicious. Take my word for it. <laughs> All right, guys, these two beds here are my green beans. Uh, I don't remember the variety. It, I'll put it in the description below if you're interested. Uh, green beans, and they're a bush bean also, of course. Uh, I don't know how this volunteer, I think this is a rapini, Italian greens. It got, and it, it started growing in there all by itself, so that's a good plus. But anyways, um, yeah, this is a bush bean, uh, green bean, and they are, uh, I never grew them before. Uh, I don't remember the variety. Again, I'll put it in the description below. Um, and they are doing fantastic. All right, guys, this here is our radish bed. Now, as you know, if you've grown radishes before, they grow very quickly. You'll have radishes within three weeks to a month. Um, we overplanted here. We never planted this variety before. We wanted to try them out. Uh, and also, we're going to let some go to seed and get some seeds out of them. Um, but next year what we're going to do is we're going to plant, we're going to divide the bed into thirds. So one third of the bed we're going to plant radishes and then wait about two weeks and then plant the other um, third. Wait two, wait two weeks and then plant the other bed here uh, two weeks after that. Uh, that way we have a fresh supply of radishes all the time. Alright guys, here I have some more zucchinis like my other bed there. Uh, these beds here, I didn't uh, put the concrete block. I just left them alone. It, <laughs> that was a lot of work. <laughs> so I got 18 of those concrete blocks uh, beds. But here I got more zucchinis here. Not all germinated, so it's kind of spotty here and there. My wife has some pineapple growing over here. So that's going to be interesting. Um, here I have crookneck and straightneck squash. Yellow, those yellow squash, delicious. I love those. Over here, I have some corn. I got two different varieties of corn. Uh, this variety, you can tell here, it didn't do so well. But the one in the back, uh, it was a different variety. And I'll put that in the description also. Um, they did very, they're doing very well. Uh, but they're green, they're healthy, and um, they're doing good. So let me show you what's going on over here. All right, guys, here I have two in-ground beds of a leafy green that most, gardener, most gardeners would never, ever put in their garden. In fact, they always pull them out. They are the dandelion. <laughs> this variety of dandelion, this is in an, an Italian variety. They're called, uh, I think they're called red dandelions, but the stems on the dandelion are red. Um, I've tasted these already. They are not as bitter as your traditional dandelion that you would buy at the store. Uh, they're a little bit more mellow. This would be perfect and that's why we're growing it because they're very very nutritious. Uh, they are perfect if you were to go buy those spring mix salads that you buy in those little plastic containers and then chop some of this up and throw that in there too. That uh, would be uh, excellent, and that's what we're waiting for. Uh, we're going to let these grow. We're going to let these grow to seed also, and when they start forming that little uh, puffy ball, uh, we're going to cut those off and save those seeds for next year. Um, but yeah, these are dandelions. And then right next door here, let me show you what else I planted. All right, guys, right next door to my dandelion here, I have purslane. Now, that is another weed uh, that I'm very familiar with as a child. I remember when I was a young kid, my sister-in-law said, yeah, you can eat those. They were growing wild up, uh, up north where I lived. Um, so we cut them up, washed them, and made like, a, you know, put a little olive oil and uh, vinegar and lemon juice, whatever you like on there. And uh, they were delicious. So I remembered that, and that stayed in my head. And I remember seeing this growing up north all the time. So they, it does grow wild here, but not that, not that much. They're hard to find. So I'm wondering how this variety is going to do in the Texas heat. 
Uh, but we will see. Uh, as long as I keep them watered and if they can resist the heat, that's cool. Uh, but mainly I want to get make these go to seed also so they can uh, uh, plant more for next year. But this again, in a salad, the purslane is fantastic. So that's why we're growing this too, and they're super, super nutritious. All right, guys, here we have a bed of strawberries. Now, these were given to us by some good friends of ours. So, Neil and Jacqueline, if you're watching, thank you very much. Uh, my wife and I really appreciate you guys giving us all these. Uh, they have a, a ton of these. So, we were out there, uh, my wife and, um, and Jacqueline were out there picking all these. And... Um, brought them home I didn't realize how many there were <laughs> so they filled up this whole bed of course they're very small right now but uh, you know how that goes that'll change soon and then we'll have some delicious strawberries all right guys here I'm just kind of experimenting with some watermelon I got two different varieties this is a diploid watermelon this is an ancient watermelon there's an interesting story behind this I'm gonna put that in the description below the uh, video the link to where I got this and there's a video to that too uh, that there is my jumbo musk melon, and then the, the far row is your traditional uh, uh, yellow cantaloupe. Um, so I'm just kind of experimenting with them. I'm going to let this watermelon grow out that way. This one I'm going to kind of train it to go that way, and same with that one. And that far one I'm going to train it to go that way, all the vines. So. Uh, We'll see, like I said, I'm just experimenting with them. If we get a few melons out of these, it'd be great. It's the seeds I'm, I'm, I'm really, uh, what I really want. All right, guys, on this bed and on that one, we planted a leafy green called Rapini. And it's a leafy Italian green, uh, bitter, delicious sauteed with uh, garlic and olive oil, and some capers too, if you put some capers in there. Oh, you pour that on your pasta, out of this world. But anyways, we planted them. They, I didn't know there was a couple different varieties. The variety we bought uh, only took 30 days uh, to grow, to, to fully, you know, mature to be able to eat. Um, and then it just bolted, okay? It bolted, it all went to seed. And that kind of, it kind of freaked me out. I didn't expect it that soon. So uh, we enjoyed Tons, tons of pasta and tons of, uh, of uh, rapini, uh, leafy greens from that. But uh, like I said, 30 days and then they just bolted like crazy. We, I went to some research and I bought another variety that's supposed to be 60 days. Um, so they're very young right now, very small. That bed's doing a little better. This one's not so, doing so good. Uh, that one's doing a little better. And I'm worried about the heat because now it's starting to get hot here in East Texas. And I don't know. Last year they did pretty good. Or was it the year before? I don't remember now. Uh, but they did okay in the heat. So i got to keep an eye on them and keep them watered. Um, this bed here. This bed did not do well. <laughs> this bed here I had uh, mustard greens. Now what happened with these mustard greens... Um, they were okay. We, we, we were able to eat some of the mustard greens. What happened was we got these little beetles. And these little beetles just savagely attacked and started laying the larvas, the little maggot kind of things, all over them. And they just started eating away at it. And I was spraying them almost daily with soap and water and uh, neem oil mix. The stuff works great, but you have to spray them direct contact for them to, uh, to, for them to die. But what had happened was they were completely eaten. Those little uh, beetles and maggots just ate everything, the larvae I should say really. They ate everything and uh, we really couldn't enjoy the mustard greens. And right next to it we had planted some uh, kale and they ended up in the same fate. They, they got all ate up and um, so now, I don't know, we're, we might just leave it alone or plant something else in there. I mean, we still have six months of growing season here in East Texas, so. <laughs> all right, guys, these four beds here are, we have two eggplant 
and two pepper beds here. My mistake, and this is the beds that are not doing well, and it's not because of the beds, it's because of my mistake. I thought because we're, it's so mild and warm here in East Texas uh, that I direct planted, direct sowed all the eggplants and the peppers. Um, they didn't do so well. The eggplants, one or two come up and they, they kind of like did nothing. Here, kind of the same thing, but a little better. I actually replanted these two or three times. I plant them and about two weeks later, if I didn't see them germinate, I plant again. If I didn't see them germinate, I think I, went, I planted two or three times in here. Um, same thing with the peppers, but the peppers are doing a little better. They're small, they're maybe three inches in height or so. Uh, the eggplants are not doing good at all. Uh, one or two come up and they're just not doing well. So next year, I know from my mistake, I'm going to grow these inside first and under controlled conditions, perfect temperature. Once the plant gets, you know, to a good height, six inches or so, I'm going to bring them outside when the, when the weather's more stable and uh, and transplant them um, but basically just for eggplants and peppers all right guys here i have my bed of kale this is a red russian kale and this here is a lacinato or your more your dinosaur kale um, they're doing pretty good they're very young yet so they have a lot of growing to do and i can't wait to gobble this up all right guys that is it for this update um, this is again like I said this is my first year this is a brand new garden and everything's working out great uh, there's a learning curve here because I gotta figure out what does good and what doesn't do good and not to plant it next year and I know my mustard greens do not do good here because there's a certain beetle that just attacks it so uh, unless I find a different variety maybe I'll try a different variety but um, mustard greens are going to be off the menu. <laughs> um, if you're wondering about this uh, weed barrier cloth here, this stuff works great. Uh, when we first put it on, we thought maybe it was a little loose, but with the heat, the sun, the heat from the sun, um, it stretches. It, it, it stretches it nice and tight. So that's a, a good plus. It works great. I don't have to cut any grass here. Occasionally, you'll get a little scraggler coming through here, and I'll just get my weed eater and a weed trimmer and just trim it off. Uh, other than that, no weeds growing in the pathways. All right, guys, I guess that is it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and if you liked it, please hit the, hit the uh, like and uh, hit the subscribe button. And when you subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell and that will alert you to a new uh, video. Uh, I'm going to put links in the description to to whatever, you know, whatever seeds where I got them, uh, those little clips and things like that. Uh, I'm going to try and put those in there. If they're not there uh, when you uh, check, I will eventually put them in there, okay? Uh, thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video.